how to pitch real estate investors. Do you have an amazing real estate deal and you're wondering how can I get investors to invest with this? How can I raise money for this project? Well, I'm gonna share with you how to pitch a real estate deal, how to get investors actually interested in your deals and how to make sure that you don't disappoint with your projects. Let's go. Noel. Yeah, she can fix that. If you gotta get it done, all you need to do it better. Well, she can fix that. Yeah, she can fix that. Investment to get back, trying to get a big stack. She can fix that. Let's fix that. So we're gonna get right into it. When it comes to pitching real estate deals, I am an absolute expert. Not because I am always pitching to real estate investors, but because people are always pitching me deals. As a real estate multimillionaire, entrepreneur, mentor, speaker, author, mom of five, and so much more, I have been involved in real estate for well over two decades. Yeah, I'm not that old, but it has been over two decades. And in this time, I can tell you that I have seen so many different investors pitch deals to me, and I'm gonna share with you exactly which deals actually get the most type of investors, how you should pitch to investors, where to find these investors, and how to make sure that you don't disappoint with your presentations. So when it comes to pitching a real estate deal to an investor, the first thing that you are going to need is what's called a pitch deck. A pitch deck is simply a PowerPoint presentation or you can make it in Canva, but it's a short presentation, maybe it's five to 25 pages that outlines what the deal is. We call it a pitch deck because in many cases, it is the deck, it is what you usually would present if this was like old school, maybe 10, 20 years ago, where you'd have to stand in front of people with a PowerPoint and go through the entire presentation, it was called your pitch deck. And so it is very important when you have a deal to create a pitch deck. It doesn't take very long, and in many cases, once you've outlined what you want to put in it, you can even have a freelance person help you create the pitch deck by going to sites like Fiverr or Upwork. They can professionally put together your pitch deck so that you could blast it out to investors, or you could send it individually to investors that you speak with that maybe show an interest to you so that they have something tangible that they can read over. You can even go over the pitch deck with them and then let them ask their questions at the end and you answer them and take their investment. So that's usually how the process goes. So let me explain to you what should be in the pitch deck, how you should present, what's the best ways to present so that you actually raise the funds for your project. If you have ever found any value in any of my videos, please make sure that you subscribe. Only 36% of all the people that view my channel are actually subscribed to this channel. I need you to subscribe so that I can hire more people to do great research, to give you the best information. And the more subscribers I have, the bigger names that I am able to talk to. They share with me great information and I pass that information to you for free. Subscribe to this channel to let me help you. What is the investment? The first thing that you need to put in your pitch deck is the overall goal of what the investment is. You're going to do a summary. It's funny. Yes, it will start with a summary. Most people think that you would put that in the conclusion or at the end of the pitch deck, but really you need to get right to the point. What is this project? Are you investing in single family homes? Are you investing in assisted living complexes? Are you investing in raw land and you're going to develop the land? Are you doing conversions? Like maybe you decided you're going to take hotel hotels and turn them into apartment buildings. Again, what is the investment project? You need to do an overview or a summary right from the beginning. This is gonna immediately pull people in and this needs to be a short description of what it is that you're doing, why this is amazing, and you know some great pinpoints or, or, or high points of what you will wanna tell right from the beginning. Again, pitch decks are supposed to bring people in immediately. You don't want them to fall asleep or be disinterested or immediately say, no, I'm not interested, but you do want to give them exactly what it is they are here for. So for example, if I was doing a pitch deck. I actually have one for some of our investments. We are investing in distressed properties, multifamily residential. So in other words, apartment complexes, okay, that's multifamily residential again. So apartment complexes, but we're also using distress because in other words, we are buying discounted properties or undervalued properties. We're going to do renovations to them so that each unit is renovated and increases in value. And then we are going to make a portion of that apartment complex 
short-term rentals. So in many cases, when you go to an apartment complex, you will see that most of the apartment units are available for rent. And in most cases, you have to do a long-term lease, six months, 12 months, 24 months, something like that. Well, a portion of our units will be used for long-term rentals, but a portion will be put on sites like Airbnb, HomeAway, Expedia, and et cetera, et cetera. So that is my deal, and that's what I would open up with, that we're doing distressed properties, multifamily, residential. I also would tell you the area that we're in and what our main purpose is, and I get right to the point. And one of the things that I'm immediately bringing you in and getting you interested, as I just gave you that, you're like, oh, distressed properties at a discount. Oh, long-term and short-term. So you can see that I'm already diversifying not only our portfolio, but I am diversifying each apartment complex so that I can make more money on those short-term rental properties, which would increase the cash flow. So yes, I would have the stable long-term tenants that are there. They're gonna be there for a year. And then I would have some of the units used as short-term rentals. And then we have those higher cash flows and I would have a separate property manager managing those short-term rentals. I would get right to the point and I would tell you that and you would immediately be interested in what I'm doing. That is how you would do it. So again, if you were investing in any type of property no matter again if it was just raw land you will say oh we're, we're getting 10 acres 20 acres whatever again whatever your goal is the area that you're in and again why is this so amazing that would be the next thing that you're going to say and we're going to talk about that the opportunity so the next thing that you would talk about in your pitch deck or again uh, again it would be in the beginning somewhere in those first three or four um, pages would be the opportunity like what is the growth what is the reason why this is an amazing opportunity so I would talk about how there is a lack of housing. I would talk about the shortage of housing in the area, but then I would also talk about the growth of the short-term rentals and how a portion of our complex is going to be used for short-term rentals because that brings us a higher cash flow. I would give you stats on how much more money we would make renting those properties out on a nightly basis versus a monthly basis. And then I will also show you the comparison where if we took a port 50% of it and we did short-term rentals and 50 and did long-term, how much you would make more if we just, instead of just doing long-term rentals. I would show you that there is a much better opportunity by diversifying what's going on in the apartment complex. And I would show you the opportunity via stats and different demographics in the area, maybe some economic indicators, like what companies are moving into the area or how much net migration has been in the area, or maybe demographics about the population, like they're very highly educated or they make this amount of money and they're paying this amount of rent or I would talk to you about how much the rent has gone up in the area like it used to be this and now it's this again getting people very interested that there is an opportunity here not that you're just trying to do some real estate deal but why is this a great opportunity what are some of the stats that you have to support why this is a great investment you want to make sure that's right in the beginning of that pitch deck because it's so important why you are qualified so again, in that beginning, you put the opportunity, you'd also put like the market experience and what's going on in market conditions. That's a whole nother section. And in fact, it may be a whole page what the market conditions of your area. But more importantly too, in the beginning, somewhere in your presentation, you must talk about yourself and your team and why you guys are qualified to do this project. This is gonna get people interested to work with you. If you're just some high school dropout that's been laying on your parents' couch and you haven't been doing anything, you have no education, and no experience, that's not going to make people want to invest. But if you can tout all of your great accomplishments, like I'm a multimillionaire, I built my portfolio from this, and now it is this, I am college educated, I have a master's degree from Penn State and a and an MBA from Baylor, I graduated the top 10% of my class, I have done you know X amount of Z in, in real estate, and again, you would talk in dollars, like I've invested $10 million of my own funds into real estate and created you know $100 million worth of profits. I might talk about past projects that I've done that were successful and how the investors were paid. Again, why are you qualified? That needs to be in the pitch deck and it needs to be compelling. If you don't have a lot of experience or you don't have this great education, then you need to have people on your team and you will tout their experience and their qualifications. And in some cases, I've even seen pitch decks where they will put, we have over 45 years of combined experience. The main guy may be only like 27 years old, so he doesn't have a lot of experience, but he has brought on other people with him that have some gray hair and those are the people 
people that are bringing all these years of experience and it makes the team and the investment seem so much stronger. I cannot stress to you how important your qualifications and your past successes are to you receiving money from investors. They want to know that you have a track record of success or that somebody on the team has a track record of success. They also do care about education. I know there are people that have raised money and they didn't have any you know, high school diploma, for example, but now those funds are bankrupt. Most of the funds that actually make a lot of money are ran by smart people. I'm not trying to be funny here, but having an education in these areas usually does prove valuable, not because you know you went to some certain Ivy League school or anything like that but because you have that education and you usually have a network that comes with that education to help you with those projects and that can information can be passed on to investors and that makes them comfortable to invest how and when do investors get paid now this is the fun part and you want to make time make sure you spend a lot of time on this so you've talked about the in, the, the investment you've talked about the project you've got them all excited you're going through you're showing pictures of maybe the development, maybe showing pictures of other projects, maybe even showing pictures of your past projects. But now it is time to talk about what's in it for them. So as an investor, when I'm listening to any pitch, and again, I get hundreds of pitches a month, okay? Literally, Noelle Randall gets hundreds of pitches of different projects, everything from small fix and flips to 300 unit apartment complexes. But in every single scenario, I am looking to see what's in it for me. I don't care if you're only asking for $10,000. If you have no way of giving me the $10,000 back, I'd rather give $250,000 to this guy who told me I'm going to get my $250,000 back in three years. I'd rather know that I'm getting a return on my investment. Understand that. I would rather live here that I'm getting a return on my investment in 10 years versus someone that tells me, well, I just need $10,000 and you're probably going to get it back in 30 days. In most cases, I wouldn't even believe that. Even a fix and flip in most cases takes more than 30 days to sell and close to someone else. So again, be realistic and tell the truth, but actually be optimistic. I'm not saying that you should give worst case scenarios, but in some cases you may do that. You may put best case scenario and worst case scenario just to show as a comparison so that the investor is educated and like, okay, it may be five years before I get my money back, or it may be two. And again, they can deal with that. But if you have no idea when they're getting their money back, how they're getting it back, what the exit strategy is, you have a problem. So let me quickly explain the types of investments that I do do. The types of projects that I actually have said yes to actually are now much bigger projects now, but I used to do smaller ones. Like I said, I had a student that was 18 years old that was able to get $8,000 out of me just for me to invest in some Airbnbs in Florida. It was a small investment and it proved very valuable, but the one thing that he let me know upfront was how I was getting my money back. And so let's talk about that. You may have a project where you're not going to be giving their money back until you actually refinance into permanent financing. That's usually how investors are paid. I'm just giving you the big secret right here. If you've been watching, that was the big secret right there. In most cases, you repay your investors when you move into permanent financing. Let me explain. So if you're doing a small project like a fix and flip, you would get a hard money loan that would acquire the property and give you the renovation budget. You would fix the property up, that's the fix part, that's the renovate part, then you would flip it, meaning you would sell it. So when you sell it, that's when you would repay the investor in that case. But what if you weren't gonna sell the property and you were just gonna put a tenant in the property? Well, then you would refinance out of that hard money loan into permanent financing and that's when you would repay the investor. Simple. Now let's talk about a bigger project. Okay. I have big ones like where we're doing real estate conversions where maybe um, a guy, he bought some land. All right. And he's going to tear down what's there and he's going to build an apartment complex. He acquired the land in the business for $1 million. Okay. Let's just use that as an example. He needs $250,000 from me to buy that business. And then he is going to get construction financing to tear that down and build an apartment complex. Well, for me, I'm not going to get my $100,000 back, okay, that was the scenario, until he builds that building and refinances out of the construction financing into the permanent financing. That's usually when I get my principal back. And then now we have apartments. So now the apartments are getting rented. 
they're all being leased out and then I share the cash flow. So as they're getting leased and they're making money each month, okay, now I get a portion of the profits. That's usually how bigger deals work. So again, I had to give a bigger amount, but I usually don't get my principal back, the amount I invested for many years. So it's a bigger amount invested, but it's a bigger payout at the end. On a little deal, it's a smaller payout, but you get your money faster. Those are usually how it works, whether it's a pitch deck for a, a fix and flip or a pitch deck for a 300 unit complex. The answer is the same. When do I get my money? How do I get it back? That's the key. And last but not least, I have a special gift for you. Go to noellesfreebook.com and get my book, Real Estate Millionaire Secrets, absolutely free. You just cover the shipping. This best-selling book will help you invest in real estate the same way that I did. There are checklists, scripts, templates, and so much information on how I was able to take myself from my parents' basement to a self-made multimillionaire. This book is absolutely free at noellesfreebook.com. You just cover the shipping. Again, that's noellesfreebook.com. N-O-E-L-L-E -L -L -E with an S, free, F-R-E-E, -E, book, B-O-O-K. Noellesfreebook.com. Go right now, supplies are limited, and we will ship your book immediately. I just wanna make sure that you have all of the resources, all of the tools, and all of the knowledge that you need to be successful. This is Noelle, to your success.